Welcome everyone, Richard Schneeman here. Today we're talking about instance and class methods. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is an example of the a user class. We have class, user, and end. That's a class definition. We can make an instance of that class by saying user.new. So we can assign that to a variable called Richard. Um, I like to think of instances as they, they are instantiated. I know it's uh, using the same word to describe what it is, sort of. Uh, but they are created, instantiated means created, using the new keyword, the new method. So uh, Richard is an instance of user. And we can actually use the is a method. So uh, Richard dot is a uh, question mark, and then we pass in the class of user. Notice it is a capital U. So uh, that is the user class. All right. Uh, so here we can put a method into our user class. So favorite thing is going to just simply puts the string Ruby exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. <clears throat> The question of the day, is this a instance method or is it a class method? Give you just a second to think. All right. Uh, you might be wondering, and maybe this might help, uh, which one of these is correct? Is it user, capital user, dot favorite thing? Is that what would we would call and that would be correct? Or are we going to have an instance of user? So we're going to create an instance with user.new, assign it to a variable, and on that instance call favorite underscore thing. Okay, time's up. It is an instance method. Uh, so favorite thing is an instance method in that situation. So uh, how how do you write a class method exactly? Uh, we haven't uh, we haven't seen that before, but we've used them. We've used user.where, uh, maybe user.find, user.includes, all all of those different uh, methods with active record, but you know, how do you write one of them? Before we get started with that, I want to talk about self. In Ruby, self is a context-sensitive keyword. If you're familiar with JavaScript, it's very similar to this. Uh, most programming languages have something like this. Uh, if you put self inside of a method, so here we have a method called who am I, and uh, you were so we're actually returning self from this. Um, if we put Richard who am I, it's going to tell us hey, this is a instance of user, and that's whenever you, uh, whenever you put a um, object inside of Ruby, that's just kind of what it looks like. And if you want to double check and be really sure that uh, self is that exact instance of user, then you can compare Richard.WhoAmI, which is going to return self, so basically it's going to return Richard, which is a user.new, and you can compare that to the original Richard. So Richard at who am I double equals Richard. The result is true. So self in the context of that method is the instance. Okay. Uh, so I like to think of self as current context. Uh, we can use self anywhere, not just inside a method. So if you open up IRB and put self.inspect, it's going to tell you that is the main context. If you open up a class, here we have class user, and then puts self.inspect, it is going to tell us that self is user. Notice uh, in the, just a couple slides ago, we had self inside of an actual method. And that's the main difference here. In this scenario, self is inside of the class, not inside of a method. Okay, so let's play. What is self? We have class person put self, and what do you think self is? If you said person, you would be correct. What about module foobar? We haven't talked about module, but uh, it's a Ruby construct, and we put self inside of it. What do you think the result is going to be? If you guessed foobar, you are correct. Uh, so last week, uh, we talked about scope and Ruby variable scope. So self and variable scope are definitely related. Whenever we change scope, uh, we have the capability and, or potential of changing our uh, self variable. So uh, I talked about or started off talking about class methods. How do we actually write one using, well, we're probably going to use self since I'm talking about it right now, but um, how do we go ahead and do that? So previously we had uh, def favorite thing. Well, if we define a method on self, which in the context of user uh, is the actual user class, we're actually defining a method 
on the user class. So here we have def self dot favorite thing puts Ruby. So uh, in this context, we are actually saying, hey, we're going to create a class method. So this is a method on the class of user. And whenever you call it, it is going to output Ruby, um, bang, bang, bang. So if we put user.favorite thing, we get the output that we would, we would expect. Uh, if we try this on an instance, so we create an instance with user.news, assign it to a variable, call favorite thing on that variable, we're going to get an undefined method error because right now there's we only defined the class method, but we haven't defined the instance method. We can have a class and an instance method with the exact same name. That's perfectly fine. But, um, you know, uh, if you're if you're getting this and you're saying, wait a second, I've got a method with that name and, you know, you know for sure that Richard is a, a user instance, uh, maybe it's a class method instead of an instance method or the other way around. Uh, so while you're coding, you might also see this, this uh, class less than less than self um, and then an end. So if that's wrapping a method, that also is an indication that you are creating a class method. So I, I generally prefer to not use this. Uh, I find if you need a lot of class methods and you have a ton of methods inside of this kind of class less than less than self uh, little code block, then it's confusing sometimes to know whether you're, you're modifying a class method or a instance method. So uh, either one of these, they're both 100% the same. Uh, generally, whenever I'm coding, I look for self, and if I see self wrapping a method, like class less than less than self is wrapping favorite thing in the first example, or if I see def self dot something, then I know I am working with a class method as opposed to an instance method, and that's how we can create them. You might also be asking yourself, oh yeah, and just in general, I prefer self dot. Uh, method name. I think it's a little bit, it might be a little bit more of a verbose, a little bit more typing, um, but it's also a little bit more clear when you're reading it. All right. Uh, so mm, quick example of a class method. So user.where, where is the method and it is a method on top of user class. Uh, now this is going to be provided to us by active record. So in the previous examples I've given on these slides, we've only been using not uh, Ruby and not active record. So we wouldn't have where, but uh, in Rails, we will have where. And then uh, an example of an instance method, if once we have an instance of user, uh, it would know name. So we can call richard.name where Richard is our instance of that user. Hopefully, um, the terminology of instance and class is not, uh, you know, hopefully you're becoming a little bit more familiar with it. And as I go on with the rest of the class, I'm going to keep on using this terminology of class methods and instance methods and classes and instances. And uh, if you get confused, just try to go back to uh, go back to these. It is pretty important to keep those two uh, separate in your head. All right. Uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about today is JavaScript.